Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Yacht Talk. We are delighted to be back and to bring you the latest and the greatest from the world of super yachts. Today, we are at Heeson's shipyard in Oss, in front of shed number six. This is where the magic happens in terms of the welding. Our guests today on the show, Frank Lauchman. He is exterior designer for Project Jade and Sean Van Herk, senior naval architect. Let's join them right now in the shed. Gentlemen, hello and welcome to Yacht Talk. So, sure, this is quite a location, isn't it? Where are we exactly? Uh, we are here at uh, shed number six. This is our aluminium construction hall. We can build uh, two uh, uh, aluminium hulls of about uh, 50 meter or uh, one uh, aluminium hull of uh, 80 meter uh, at the same time. So we'll find out a bit more about what's happening here in shed number six. But for the moment, let's talk about a big, a new project happening here, and it's Project Jade, right behind us. Now, Short, after Aquamarine and Sophia, Jade is already the third vessel in the 50-meter aluminium series. So what do you think makes this platform so successful? Uh, she is very successful because she's very sporty with a top speed of 23 knots. Uh, she has very sporty uh, exterior lines, which uh, Frank will tell you more about later on. And what's very good is that she's the third of a series. So we uh, solved all the challenges already in the, in the development of the first one. Now, Frank, I've seen you design yachts by hand. It's an impressive process. You brought pens and paper here. So can you convince us maybe to take a look at how you do it, but also uh, the features of this new yacht behind us, Jade? Yes, I'd be happy to do that, of course. That's uh, one of the reasons we're here today. And uh, I will be happy to show you and tell you a little bit more about her features. Fantastic, let's go. How do you start? Uh, we start with a good conversation all the time. But this time they asked me to make a distinctive yard. Um, and I thought, what can I do to, to be special here? Because, you know, all the industry uh, thinks about this 500 gross tons mark. So it was my idea to use the heritage of Galactica Star, a vessel from 2013, and revive that in this vessel. So that's, uh, that's how we started. Uh, so I, I, Galactica Star has one arch going from the aft. I'll, I'll more or less draw it for you. And I thought for this vessel, why don't, why don't we put it up just, uh, just at once? So we, we cover with one arch, we cover two decks. We have the arches coming down from forward end all the way down to the stern. They embrace the aft decks, so they create shaded and protected area on the aft decks. Second thing is the elevated beach club. We wanted to make sure that the beach club, when the hatch turns down to the swim platform, that that is one level, so that the owners have the feeling that the beach club is continued on the swim platform. It gives extra quality. Then another important thing is the, the pointed bow. We really pointed it uh, and it has its nose down a little bit. So this goes down a little bit, which gives a very sporty and rugged character. Uh, the third thing is, of course, very important. Under these arches is floor to ceiling glass for Sky Lounge and Saloon, the public spaces, which gives uninterrupted side views. And in a very important detail for the captain are the non-distorting windows, which consist of three flat window panes. Very important. Wow, Frank, thank you. That was really interesting. Well, it was a big pleasure to have this chance to, to do this live and uh, lively. Thank you very much. Very much so. Thank you. The project started like a year ago and will live for 10 years after the delivery, at least, I hope. Uh, so, taking consideration also the exterior lines and uh, try to harmonize exteriors and interiors and trying to make an object that will be fresh, contemporary, a bit um, modern, let's say, in a modern way. 
uh, but without uh, have the cold experience of the minimalist of the past. We have uh, for sure the main deck is uh, a key point for us, uh, starting from uh, the big saloon uh, with the, these uh, enormous uh, windows where there is no basically no divisions between interior and exterior, especially the area of the uh, main saloon, the entrance with the sofas, the TV areas. And um, we created these, uh, let's say, really enormous dining areas that is uh, uh, very peculiar and very particular on this series of uh, boat. And especially on Jade, we optimize the space of the uh, China room. It will be really an entertaining place. A very nice point of the boat is the flybridge. The flybridge is, uh, first, is enormous in dimensions and uh, has uh, all the features that you can uh, searching on a, on a flybridge of this size because you have a, a very large area for sitting and entertaining your guests or your friends with an enormous bar, sitting areas, dining areas, and then you have the jacuzzi and a sun pad. So all the activities on, uh, on Al Fresco uh, or on the flybridge or on the sun deck, whatever you want to call it, it's all condensated on this deck and it's not uh, overcrowded. So you have also space for do a party also having all of that. Jade is the condensation of large possibilities, but with straight details. Short, as a senior naval architect, you have been involved with many Heeson projects. But which one has been a key highlight for you? Uh, yeah, the most difficult projects are always the, the highlights. Uh, so uh, the ones I like uh, the most at the moment are uh, 60 meter uh, uh, Skyfall, because she's really, really fast. And the 80 meter uh, Cosmos project was really interesting. But still, I also like these uh, series yachts. Uh, for this uh, 50 meter aluminium, it was a real challenge to, to find improvements to the previous uh, series that we've done. So that was also a nice challenge. Now, ever since the beginning of the shipyard, that was more than 40 years ago now, Heeson has been using aluminium for building ultra-fast and efficient yachts. Why is it that so very few shipyards build in full aluminium? I think uh, it's because uh, the traditional uh, shipbuilding material is steel and it is more difficult uh, to build in, uh, in aluminium because uh, it, it takes a bit different techniques, uh, different uh, skills for personnel. So it's, it's harder to find those people. And uh, the similarity between steel and aluminium is it, that they're both metals, but there are many, many differences between them. So. Okay, and one of the key benefits of aluminium is, of course, it's light weight. Can you take us through some of the savings you achieve through aluminium? Yes, that's true. Uh, aluminium is lighter than steel. Uh, the density of aluminium is about uh, 30 percent of that uh, of the density of steel, but that does not mean that the uh, aluminium yacht is 30 percent of the uh, weight of an aluminium ship, steel ship, because there are many, many more uh, differences. And most aluminium ships are fast, so they have bigger engines, makes makes them more heavy, of course. But if I compare two uh, almost the same ships, two 500 GT yachts with about the same speed, then the aluminium yacht will be about 30% lighter than the steel one. So okay, so it's lighter and that also translates into fuel consumption savings, I guess. Um, yes. Hence, it's new sustainability credentials on top of the weight and performance. Yes, that's true. Uh, the, the resistance is mainly determined uh, by the weight of a ship. So a lighter ship will have a better performance and, uh, and use less uh, fuel. Short, I understand that Heeson is also using smaller engines to boost up its sustainability performance. That's true. Uh, we do that, for example, for our uh, 50 meter Nova series, also a fully aluminium yacht, but it's not built for high speed. It's built for uh, more efficient uh, cruising. And on that yacht, we indeed install smaller engines, which makes the boat lighter again and even more efficient. So, so you end up in a positive spiral. Short, how much welding is involved on a yacht like Jade? Can you give us an idea? I don't know exactly, but I know that the yacht is in this shed for about uh, nine months and, uh, and that about 40 people are working on it. So that is uh, pretty uh, labor intensive indeed. And it's not that easy to find welders. I mean, it requires really specific skills. 
Yeah, that's true indeed. It requires specific skills and those people are not, uh, not easy to find. But here at Heeson we have our own school to teach people those specific skills of uh, aluminium uh, welding. And my colleague Carlos is uh, leading the, the school and he is here to help you today to learn how to weld. Okay, hi, yes. hi. thank you. That this looks uh, impressive and dangerous, if I may. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your welding helm. Thank you. And of course your protection. And okay, it. it's quite an outfit, isn't it? Yes, all right. Yes. Yeah, all right. Let's go, let's find We're out how go. to weld. We're gonna go where it starts. Okay. So we're going to go where it all starts. Okay. So Carlos, as you start, what is the first thing you need to consider? The first thing is safety. Okay. It's about, uh, it's a really high input. So it's really a ray that gets loosened by welding and it's dangerous for the skin. So automatic for the welder. So what you need, you need a proper clothing and your welding helmet and your gloves. Okay. It's like uh, when we are welding, you have to consider that you are about 6,000 degrees Celsius. Oh. Okay, so let's get let's, started. Yeah, let's get started. Let's so try. let me get first the welding helmet because every helmet has a shade number. That's the darkness when you are welding that you need to protect your eyes. So let's see how far this shade is. It's 10. So okay. it's like we are going to space oddity. We we'll put some welding gloves. So then we have the torch. Automatically, as soon as your wire makes contact with the material, it's automatic. You let go and it keeps on going. You want to stop, press one more time. You just yeah. pulse yeah. this. I will guide you the first time. Okay, here it is. Yes. Yeah. A little closer because you want to see what you're welding. I think Got you it. have a handle of it, of not it? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah. You want to do it one more experience. time? experience. So Charlotte, so we are done for today. Okay. Okay. Let me get your mask off. Tell me when it's okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay. So I got one question. Yeah. What do you think about it? It's hard work. It's yes. really hard work yes. and you have to be very uh, conscious and wary about uh, Safety. Yes. Uh, I can see that absolutely, yes. Yes. and and very precise as yes. well. And yes. sustain your attention. Yes. Yeah. That's no. True. Great experience. Whew. Thank yeah. you, Carlos. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Well, that was fun. Short, Frank. Thank you so much for coming on Yacht Talk. It's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. More Yacht Talks to come. The next one will be on Project Serena. So keep watching and remember, keep yachting. <laughs>